Hey everyone, so we're moving into our second section here with the groundwater systems and we're going to talk about the erosion and depositional features that we see caused by water moving underneath us. So what happens uh, for the erosion part is that we can get carbonic acid and where does carbonic acid come from? Carbonic acid is a natural byproduct of rainwater. Rainwater, when it falls through the air, picks up carbon dioxide in the air, it mixes with the H2O, and you get carbonic acid. We basically get acidic rain through a natural process. All rain is acidic, it's just that we don't call it acid rain until it has a lot of acid. This particular acid, carbonic acid, will react with limestone, especially that's in the ground, and cause dissolving. Dissolving of the minerals that are in the rocks. Yes. And when we get minerals to dissolve out of the rocks, you get holes underneath the ground and openings underneath, which we then call caves. Yeah, that's true. Um, caves develop in areas where the water has saturated underneath the ground. Um, as that water, the carbonic acid in it, dissolves the limestone, it's then carried away when the water disappears, leaving the opening, and uh, you get a cave. So some features in caves are these little icicles hanging from the ceiling, or these mounds that are sitting on the ground, and these are natural deposits f left behind from the dissolving of limestone. Right, it's kind of actually the opposite of what happens to make the cave. The cave has the water carry away the limestone that was there, and the stalactites and stalagmites, which we see here, remember stalactites are on top. They and tightly stalag hang to the ceiling. And stalagmites are on the bottom. That cling to the ground. Right. They are left behind because the water that is now carrying some of the limestone drips, leaving a little bit of the limestone behind, which builds up over time, making all kinds of dripstones. And we can see here in the Carlsbad Caves in New Mexico, but we can see these even in the Laurel Highlands, in the caves there. Absolutely. I've been to uh, caves up in the Laurel Highlands, uh, particularly Laurel Caverns, which has a lot of these. You can uh, take about a 45-minute drive and go see all this stuff right here in our very own area. So a region that has a lot of these features where you get limestone being dissolved is a region known as karst topography. Some of the features we see in a karst region are sinkholes, which are just depressions when the cave can't support the ground above it and collapses. And then you have uh, disappearing streams, which are a result of those sinkholes. The streams then go into those and then run underwater actually make the cave larger. So it looks like the cave just disappears, but it's going into the groundwater, going into the permeable layers, and eventually again, make it into the ocean, but through a much slower process. This is just an image of karst topography. Um, basically what you're seeing is rock that has dissolved and caved into the lower areas. So what we got here in this image here is showing you that water filling up in those saturated zones can dissolve away minerals in the limestone like we talked about and when the water table drops there's a time of severe drought you can see that when that water table drops down it'll leave behind those giant caverns that were already dissolved away it also shows the deposition of the limestone as well by showing you the formation of the stalactites and stalagmites so when the caves dry up and you get that dripping action again is when you get the minerals either deposited on the ceiling or deposited below your feet. An interesting series to watch for cave development is the Planet Earth series on cave systems. I'll leave a link at the end of this video for you to watch it. But next time we'll talk about some of the other systems we see with groundwater. See you then.